Uh, thank you, Madam Chair and committee members. I think this is one of the most important bills that, that I'm going to present this year. Um, people, you know, the legislature's and the state's responsibility to protect people's property is uh, should be as high as priority. What we have now is we have people who own property. You may be vacant for a little while. You may rent it. Um, and people move in illegally, um, and you cannot get them out. The sheriff's office now considers it a civil matter, and then you have to go through the court system. What this does is by uh, filling out an affidavit as a property owner, and by the way, if you fill that affidavit out, as a, it's, a, it's a perjury um, if you fill it out uh, wrongly, uh, but that allows the sheriff to immediately move, remove these people from these homes. The amendment specifically defines the factors that would justify a tenant's right and occupancy, which is a notarized lease, a receipt of other evidence uh, demonstrating payment, producing a driver's license or voter ID. It also makes a first-degree mis misdemeanor to provide a fraudulent documents and makes a first-degree felony if you try to lease or sell that property. And that is the bill and the amendment. Got it. Thank you. Good afternoon. Chair and members of the committee, my name is Dr. Patty Peoples, and I'm here to testify on the impact of squatters on property owners, legitimate renters, neighborhoods, homeowner insurance companies, and citizens of the state of Florida. I'm a health economist and a small business owner. I sold my company and retired, and I entered into, with a business partner, uh, buying two investment properties to provide safe, affordable, quality housing in my own neighborhood. Now, imagine for a moment that you leave from your day of serving the citizens of Florida as a senator and you return to your home. But when you walk in, there are strangers sitting on your sofa, watching your TV, eating your food. You ask who they are and what they are doing, and they tell you that they have rented this house and present you with a lease. Confused, you call the police and explain the situation and note that you are the rightful owner and you have not rented your property. The police arrive and the strangers present the officers showing a document that they have rented the home, that it, but it was leased by someone you don't know, and in fact, the document is not even signed. You anticipate that the police will arrest them and you remind yourself to increase your security. Wrong. The police will not arrest them. They will not remove them from the premises. In fact, it is you that they will remove from your own house and tell you that they have no jurisdiction. They know they are squatters and that the document is fraudulent, but they have absolutely no power in the situation. And the only way that you can retain rights to your home is to move through the crimped civil court system to evict or reject them, which gives those squatters a minimum of 20 days to prove that they have the right to be there. They get to live in your house, rent-free, likely for months since the civil court system is clogged. You have to rent a hotel or find another place to stay. You can't turn off the electricity or the water. You can't change the locks and you can't board up the windows. This scenario happened to me with a rental home that I was in the process of selling. The squatters retained full use of my home. I lost the buyer and I could not even set foot on my own property or enter the house even when I knew they were taking sledgehammers to the walls and ripping out plumbing. Because the police told me that I had, that they had the right to privacy until the civil court decided they were illegally occupying my home. The police have no power. The homeowner has no power. The only one with power in this situation are the squatters. I spent 34 days of trauma while watching my home be taken over and destroyed while they terrorized the neighborhood, smeared feces on the walls, and threw it at me. They physically assaulted me and threatened to destroy my phone went with tire iron while I, when I confronted and recorded them, and the police told me that I was the one invading their privacy and would be arrested if I did not step off that property. Upon a notice of eviction being posted, the squatters had 24 hours to vacate, and they did. Not into police custody, but to another house that they had scoped out a few days earlier. The cycle continues. Meanwhile, I was left to clean up $40,000 worth of damage done to the home, find another buyer. I lost income, sleep, and most importantly, my sense of empowerment and belief that I live in a state and a country that protects the lawful from the unlawful. Please 
passed this amendment in SB 888. This bill is neither a Republican issue nor a Democrat issue. It's not a renter or a landlord issue. It's neither a law enforcement or a judicial issue. It's everyone's issue. It's truly a people's rights bill for the fundamental right in our society, the right to access and use our personal property. If SB 888 does not pass, then squatters will continue to take advantage of the situation as it stand and run vigilante through our cities, states, and nation. Violence will happen. Insurance rates will increase. Citizens will stop investing in properties in this state. Affordable housing will be harder to attain, and we will all suffer. Thank you. Thank you.